You're listening to Planet Vero Radio. I am Cindy Schwartz. We are broadcast on 101.7 FM Real Radio WCZR, and the show is also podcast on Spreaker. It is the Patient Partner Show. Jeannie Roller and I today are going to do something a little, a little bit different. I don't know um, if we can call it different, kind of the same that we do and a little bit different. I'm going to call it house cleaning because I want to give uh, some kudos out. We talked uh, probably two, three weeks ago, Jeannie, about this lady that I had met that was uh, having a baby in a, literally in a couple of weeks and she had not been able to get any prenatal care from the time when she was about five and a half months pregnant. And the story, if you listen to the former podcast, was that she was getting care about two hours away from where she had had to move to because of her husband's job. And then being five and a half months pregnant, she couldn't get any place to give her traditional prenatal care. The only option that she had was to go to the local hospital and just walk into the emergency room and have tests and blood tests and things like that done for the last three months of her pregnancy. And so they accommodated her, the hospital did. And then the course of action was when she went into labor, in her mind, she was going to go to the same hospital. Well, at one of the last appointments that they, she had at that same hospital, and the hospital is Holmes Hospital in Melbourne, Florida, I want to give kudos to them because I know we do talk about stuff that these hospitals are doing wrong in our opinion and other people's opinions that talk on this show, but we also want to give kudos to places that are doing it right because I want to steer people to these different things, and I've said this on um, you know other people that I've talked with other medical people that I've said you know great this is a fabulous story and this is what we want to hear that this is still available in the healthcare arena so the last appointment that she went to in the ER they said well let's set it up to do um, your birthing scenario And they had decided that they were going to induce her if it wasn't so-and-so. I kind of don't go for that, but a lot of people do that nowadays. I like to wait for the natural thing, but there's underlying circumstances that I don't know with the whole situation. So they were going to do induce her, and they gave her the date and blah, 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 blah. Well, that whole thing really eased her mind that there was some kind of plan in place and that there were people that were actually bona fide that we're going to be in with this birthing process and it wasn't just like she was going to walk into the emergency room and labor which to me if i'm nine months pregnant i'd be really stressed out about all of that that there wasn't some kind of a plan well Jeannie, you know what that actually came to fruition they didn't have to induce her because as it turned out when she went to the hospital that day it was a thursday She was already two centimeters dilated and having some mild contractions and whatever. The baby was born about five and a half hours later, six hours later. later. There was no complications at all. The lady told me that the nurses were phenomenal. The doctor was actually one of the doctors that had seen her in the emergency room for some of these blood previous blood tests and and those kind of things, ultrasounds and that. And she was really kind of happy that she had had a little bit of a history with the guy. And I don't know if he was chosen specifically or it was hours that he was working that day or whatever. So the baby was born a beautiful baby boy, healthy, and, and the mother was stress-free. And the hospital worked along with her, and their nursing staff was incredible. So, you know, kudos to them that this is still happening in this day and age because these are the stories that I want to hear, Jeannie. I really kind of, it's its very stressful for us, I think um, I can include you in this, to hear these horrific stories that we do hear from, from patients that, that we can't wrap our brains around why this isn't the norm in every hospital and why we're always running up seemingly against these brick walls where we have paperwork and paperwork and paperwork that's telling us what to do and that is the only way that you can do that patients and if you don't like it lump it you know this is your corporate health care so Jeannie go ahead and run with that and let's do a little house cleaning on some of this stuff or housekeeping okay well Cindy um, I come across a couple of um, people this week one was uh, a person who was taking a high dose of statins and they were worried they didn't want to take them uh, and their comment was that they were going to beg their doctor to cut back on the dosage and I'm like you don't understand you are the one taking these medicines 
you just simply say, I will not take a high dosage of this rather than beg your doctor not to be giving them to you. I, I just don't understand the mentality there of people not un understanding that it is their bodies that's their right to choose what goes into it. Mm -hmm. it, it just kind of blows my mind. Well, there has to be a, there has to be a conversation. I mean, you know, that's what we talk about all the time. There has to be a conversation. I mean, we had a lady on a while ago that had an, a, a surgery on her foot, and she went to a very, very well known hospital in uh, one of the southern states and just had horrific care. I mean, she was told, this is the way it is, lady. You're stripped naked. These are all the drugs. You're doing this. You're having a urinary catheter, blah, 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 blah. And as the surgery turned out, I, you know, it wasn't, it, it wasn't good. And the surgery had to be right. redone. And, and remember, she said, listen, I'm not, no way am I going back to you people. And so she did her research now, you know, like what you're saying about these people. Some people just don't know. And that lady did the research, wound, it, 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 it wound up in an outpatient clinic, had phenomenal care, couldn't believe that she hadn't done that to begin with and had found a place that was like, okay, let's talk about this. Yeah, you don't need this. Yeah, you don't need that. We can do this. This is what we can do. So why aren't these conversations happening more and more and more instead of less and less and less? Right. And then I had um, another man who has a dermatologist appointment and he's stressing out because he doesn't want to be totally naked in front of the female observer, whoever she is. And he was like, well, I'm going to ask if I can leave this on or this on or maybe I just won't go. And again, you know, he doesn't have to go through this. Mm -hmm. He goes to the all I would say is go to your appointment, leave on what you want to leave on, and, and put the on the medical staff to say, take it off, and justify why it needs to come off. Because if you're not having your male parts examined, there is no reason for them to be exposed. Make them justify to you why they need to be exposed unnecessarily. That I mean, we keep pre preaching to people mm -hmm. this very thing same thing that you are in charge they are not in charge of your body you are mm -hmm. well there you can have the conversation and go somewhere else if that's the place that's insisting that this is what you have to do, I mean, and I don't get it right all the time either. I'm not going to say that I do. I mean, I've still been caught in situations where blah, 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 blah. But I have left and said, listen, I'll make an appointment, you know, at another time or whatever and just leave it at that. And I'm not going to start an argument with the people and just find another place that doesn't do it that way. Because that's the thing. There are so many places that do not subscribe to these kind of horrific whatever types of procedure um, side work if you will I can't think of the word but preparation that you don't have to put up with it and then when you say it to the other people that are actually doing things that I think you more humanely and more respectful they're like where is what where are they doing that what's happening I mean we don't do that kind of stuff here so I've heard that so many times it's just amazing that places are doing it it's crazy Right. But, you know, it all goes back to the quickness. If, if a patient is totally nude, then it is faster for the medical staff. Mm -hmm. That's it's all a matter of convenience. And but people don't realize they don't have to be, you know, there's been many times I've been told to, you know, do this or do that. And I don't. And when they come in, they find out I'm still dressed. Not a word is ever said. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think that that's totally true in some instances, yeah, and in other ones it isn't, because I've been in situations where the doctor right. said, we do it this way, and you know what, lady, you don't like it, there's the door, and I'm like, okay, I'll see you. Yeah. You know, I will, I'll see you. I don't want to jeopardize my health, I'm not trying to teach anybody to do that, but I, you know, there are serious things, you know, you have to stay up with it, but if there are alternatives to do things then by all means I say investigate those alternatives and there are instances where in my insurance and I don't have the greatest insurance that definitely give you a second opinion you know it's not like you're roped into that one opinion and that's it so I mean I say ask for different things but it's good and we're going to say goodbye here in a second uh, it's good to hear that that story worked out well and that baby and that mama's doing fine 
You've been listening to Planet Vera Radio. Yep, you've been listening to Planet Vera Radio. Stay tuned. (laughs) 